and that's what's leading to my battery and everything and I just go ahead and show you that as well so here's my ground connection which I really haven't hooked up yet which I get to later on and from the shed again there's nothing really fancy about this uh, this was actually an old hookup that we had just coming from our house electricity a long time ago but the solar panel power is coming through this tube here and that's just running down through there under the rocks just in case somebody wants to step over it want to crush it or anything and it's just running along this fence line all the way back down to the house Alright, and again, this is why you probably want to mount it onto your house roof so you don't really have to deal with running this whole tube down like I had to do. But again, I wanted to manage this from inside my room so I actually uh, wouldn't have to come outside and everything to monitor it. And this basically is just going under the house, which has my battery inside of it. And for my battery, it's actually going up to my room, which I'm going to show you in a second here. And I just go ahead and take this vent off just so you can see how I have it hooked up. Alright, so from here, if you can see it. I just have like a, a container basically. And it's just protecting my battery in case water or anything got in there. And that's all that's in that container. It's just my battery. And for my battery, it's, uh, those connections is running into my inverter in my room and everything my charge control as well so my charge control and in inverter is actually inside above the above the house basically so again uh what i probably would have really would have done is uh just left the battery outside because it was a hassle to get under the house since it's not really a a basement or anything i actually had to crawl under there to hook that up but i would have just had a container and just placed the battery inside the container out here and just managed it from out here but just been a whole lot easier so if you wanted to go that route so something like this like this is just a hose container and basically I would have probably just put like a, a battery inside here and I could just manage the battery and everything and ran the wires from the battery inside the house instead of crawling all the way up underneath the house so it's just an idea what I probably would have did next time so now I'm just going to show you uh, the hookup inside. I'm not really done with it, but I'll just go ahead and show you some of the hookup. Alright, so this is just my basic hookup. Nothing major. Very simple setup here. Uh, of course, I just have the charge control up here, which I showed you earlier. And then I have this kilowatt meter, which is plugged directly into the inverter, and I go uh, more into that in a minute. And I built myself a switch here that's on a wall. And that's basically built for this analog amp meter that I also bought off eBay, which I post a link to both the kilowatt meter and analog amp meter online. So if you want to add those to your systems, you can. Uh, something about the kilowatt meter. If you haven't seen these in other videos, which most people do have, uh, it's just great to have. I turn the invert on and basically that turns the kilowatt meter on. And if you can see in the front here, it has different things I can check. I can check the watts, the amps, the volts, the kilowatt hours, and different things like that. What I'm mostly interested in is how many watts different devices I plug into it are, you know, consuming. So I just plug in this my laptop and just give you a general idea how it works. All right, so now when I say I want to just check watts, I click on the watt button and. In a moment, it'll just show me how many watts that my laptop is using. So as you can see, it's using around 14, 16 watts. I'm not really doing anything on the laptop, so of course it's not going to produce too many watts or take up too many watts. I can push on the amps button here, and it's just consuming about 0.37 amps. But if I start messing around on my laptop, you can see that my amps are going up as well as my watts probably. Of course, you can check the volts and things like that. But uh, yeah, that's something I would recommend anybody gets if you're just trying to get out, 
the general idea uh, some electronics having to watch some things it takes but anyway again I post most of this online because I know I didn't uh, show you this earlier but more about the switch over here in the analog amp meter basically like I said I had to create this I just took a piece of wood painted it cut a hole in it and created a switch that I bought from my electric store and for this analog amp meter the reason I installed this was because and I go in more detail after a while in another video um, what this is going to show me is how many amps my solar panel is producing but right now it's hooked up in series so it's not really giving me a, a reading of how many amps that my solar panel is producing so what I had to do is install a switch which is going to create a short circuit so when I turn this switch on basically it's going to short out my whole system and you'll see the charge controller light goes off as well so when I turn that switch on, it's not something I want to keep on because I'm just trying to get a quick reading off on it. And on my amp meter, you can see that it it's going up. It's about 2 amps. I should be getting around 3.5 amps when I'm getting straight sunlight on it. As you can see, it's still rising. So it's kind of a cloudy day today. So that's the reason it's not really that stable on one little on one setting here. But again it's just something that I needed and I'll show you why I need just an amp meter and not a voltage meter because I can mostly determine if everything is working right based off this amp meter so again once I turn the switch off um, my analog amp meter is not going to really give me the same reading as you can see here so again I'm going to go in more detail why I just need that amp meter and the calculations and everything, Ohm's law and all of that in a later video. So yeah, this is just a basic setup again uh, about the charge controller. Like I mentioned earlier, I have a load on it right now and it's charging as you can see the blue light is on. And when I turn this inverter off, of course the, the volts in the battery is going to start to rise again because it's not load on it. So. Again, this is just my basic setup. Yours doesn't have to be this way. Uh, again, it's a very simple setup. A lot, of, uh, probably everything here probably cost under, probably under a hundred dollars. So again, I try to give you a wiring diagram of how I have this hooked up, like the the switch and the analog amp meter here, if you want to go that route. So, so yeah. In the next video, it's just gonna be more about the calculation, the mouth work, uh, how the current and the voltage is flowing, uh, how to use Ohm's law and things like that. So it's going to be like a whole teaching session. So this is basically it to the whole solar system project, as well as why I need the amp meter. Hey guys, to speed up the process of me getting the rest of the videos out, just subscribe to this video as it does show me you guys are interested and I try to speed up the process of getting the rest of the videos out as I do have to edit these and I do try to make them interesting. So again, just subscribe to the video and I try my best to get them out a little quicker for you guys.